With this simulation, you'll have the opportunity to manage an operation. You will be able to define its strategy in terms of the two markets that it goes to, uh, which have different characteristics. You'll have to plan aggregate capacity. You'll also have to monitor demand, do capacity estimation and allocation, manage your resources, determine bottlenecks, your work in process inventory, throughput time, throughput variability, and other metrics. You'll also be able to manage your raw materials inventory uh, to supply both of the lines that you'll manage. And this within the context of the firm at large, uh, in which you'll have human resources. You'll be able to measure their productivity, uh, monitor the increase or decrease the size of the workforce and monitor their utilization. And also you'll have to uh, deal with finance issues, primarily manage your cash flow uh, and your debt and capital investments. A team of managers was hired at the beginning of the year to increase the amount of cash on hand. However, this team in the, their first 50 days, they mostly burn cash instead of accumulating cash. Uh, this is, the board is worried about this situation and something needs to be done. The company manufactures medical devices um, and it's, there is a technological change looming which will render this plant um, obsolete. So there's the need to replace equipment, hence the need to accumulate as much cash as possible in this last year of operation before the upcoming technological replacement takes place. Uh, yet uh, the team, as we just saw, that was hired uh, has not been doing very well and therefore they have been fired. And now they're going to be replaced with you, who will have to manage this operation and try turning it around. Let me describe the operation in detail. Um, Medica Scientific has two lines, two production lines. The custom line makes products, which as its name suggests, are customized for specific patients. And this line places a premium on fast delivery. If you're able to deliver relatively fast, then your reputation in the marketplace will slowly start increasing and you'll be able to command higher prices in the market. There's another line, which is called the standard line. Uh, this line um, essentially delivers products which compete on price. Uh, the products here are not customized, but actually they're all the same. Both of these lines operate very differently and react to different or are catering to different uh, order winners. In this case, it's fast delivery. In this case, it's primarily price. The first line, the custom line, is a make-to-order line. Um, so the line experiences demand and then uh, makes to order. The idea here is to deliver or get through the line fast uh, so that uh, good prices are paid for your products. As we can see here, the line, at the beginning of the year, the line was empty. Uh, for a while, it was able to lower or reduce the throughput time. Hence, price started to grow a little bit. Uh, but lately, lead time or throughput time, the time it takes for the stuff to go through the line has been increasing. And we can see that prices have started to dip. So we can see that there's a little bit of a lack correlation between lead time or throughput time here, the time it takes for stuff to go through the line, and the prices that we get in the marketplace, which are essentially correlated to re the reputation of us in the marketplace. Um, so once customers come to our line, uh, we accumulate the orders here, which then wait for raw materials to be available. Once raw materials are available, then the, um, the, the, uh, the products are sent downstream to the first queue here. Uh, and these yellow boxes here are queues in front of workstations. There are works, three workstations in this line. Uh, so it goes to the first queue, which is then processed in station one, goes to a second queue, which is, would be a second queue, a first pass, then it's processed in station two goes down to a third queue, it's processed in station three, and then it goes around into a second pass to station two, and then it's delivered. So this is the structure of the custom line. This line here cannot hold unlimited amounts of, of products. It has limited space, and therefore there is a width limit. Once that limit is reached, products then um, are rejected, and I mean orders are rejected. The lines both are served by a 
from a raw materials inventory, the raw material is common for both lines. It's not shown on the main screen yet, it's there. Um, the standard line has priority over the inventory, the raw materials inventory. In other words, if you had, for instance, 100 units here in raw materials and the standard line requires 100 units and the custom another 100 units, you would first give those 100 units to the standard line and the custom line would starve. This raw materials inventory level is managed with a continuous review policy. And here we have to set the reorder point and the quantity. The, lead, the raw material comes from a reliable supplier and there is a fixed lead time from the supplier. Now, the standard line is different from the custom line. Uh, the standard line makes to stock. So we as managers must decide how much to release onto the production floor on a, on a per time basis as we make to stock and serve our customers from stock. Um, unlike the custom line, which was made to order or made to order. Uh, we're small enough not to be able to influence the price, the market price, which is pretty much exogenous. And uh, we are able to monitor the market price. And, and of course, our customers here only use price as the metric to decide whether to purchase from us or not. There isn't much information about price elasticity here. Uh, but uh, the market, uh, but we do know what the market price is. Of course, if our price is higher or much higher than the market price, customers would will be unlike will unlikely purchase from us. Uh, if our product if our product price is below the market price, they are they are likely to purchase from us or equal to the market price. But there isn't much information about elasticity. Elasticity there. Uh, managers here decide uh, on frequency and size of uh, releases of production batches onto the floor. So for instance, the managers could decide to make say 100 units every seven days or a couple of hundred units every three days or whatever. Frequency and time of product releases onto the production floor are the prerogative of management. Once those, uh, there's a fixed cost per order here. Uh, and once that product goes onto the production floor, then uh, it's it goes downstairs, it goes downstream. The first thing is, uh, the necessary matching with raw material is made here in this box that says orders. And once the raw material is available, then it's sent downstream. If no material is available, the material, the orders will accumulate here until the necessary raw material is there. And then it will be sent downstream to Q1. Q1 is processed by station one. Station one is a shared resource. It's the same station one used by the custom line. Hence managers, managers must allocate capacity of station one between the two lines. Once that's done, uh, and if there's enough capacity, then the station one will pull from Q1 into Q2. And here we have essentially a manual operation and batching. Uh, this uh, manual operation takes place within a clean room. Um, and uh, people here work uh, processing the batches that are created at the beginning of the operation. So this batching in this batching station, uh, we batch the process into production lots of size that of a size that the manage, managers decide, and then that process batch whose size you decide is processed manually by the people here in the manual processing station. So each person works individually, and it disassembles and reassembles the batch, the process batch into a transfer batch, which is then sent downstream through conveyor to the finished goods inventory. And we serve our customers from the finished goods inventory. The manual operation uses people to say, let's say disassemble this batch and reassemble it here before it can go downstream. However, the, the size of these batches are set by management. So you could have, for instance, a smaller transfer batch size than the process batch if you would like to uh, transfer stuff more, more rapidly for some reason. For instance, if you're experiencing an increasing price and would like to increase the frequency of delivers, deliveries. Of course, changing the, the relative size of the transfer batch to the process batch will not increase capacity per se, which is dictated by the number of people that you have there. Okay. Um, This is what's going on with this line. Uh, 
or an example of what could go on with this line. For instance, in this demo case, there is an increase in the size of the queue here. We know that this queue will be depleted by the capacity of the manual processing. In fact, the capacity of this line is primarily dictated by the number of people that you have in the line. And this is what deliveries would look like, which is these deliveries are episodic. Uh, they happen every so often. And the time between deliveries is dictated by the size of the batch and the number of people that you have. And uh, to that, you have to add a fixed time required for batching, for doing the batch. Uh, and yes, I forgot to tell you that there is a, a fixed uh, time in order to form the batch irrespective or independent of batch size. People here can work more than eight hours. Uh, they could work, for instance, a couple of shifts, uh, 16 hours or even 24 hours. You said that uh, that's the prerogative or a managerial decision in case you need to increase output for some reason, or you can hire more people too. Now, um, having more shifts doesn't mean having new people coming in from a new, for a new shift. It means that the same people will, will work longer hours. Uh, and uh, uh, there's a couple of things associated to that. One is that uh, overtime is more expensive. And the other thing that could happen is that fatigue may ensue. Fatigue could lead to burnout and eventually personnel turnover. Okay. And uh, so these are the two lines. Uh, we have then the standard line uh, and the custom line. And those are the structures, the way they compete, and the primary resources that you have to deal with. The custom line, as we saw, was fully automated. There, there are no, there's no people there. The standard line has a manual operation, uh, and you need to uh, manage that too. Okay. Uh, there's a couple of uh, places where you can manage additional stuff. Here you have the, in the screen for managing inventory, and here you set the parameters of your continuous review policy, which is the reorder point and the reorder quantity. Uh, like I said, the lead time of the supplier is very reliable, it's, and the order cost irrespective of order size. Uh, the, on the financial side, uh, you can get loans or pay loans at any time. There are two uh, li loan lines as described in the business case. Uh, one line is the regular, line uh, and this has a prorated interest rate and if you run out of money uh, and you don't have enough enough money to pay your salaries you'll be able to go to an emergency line which will be automatic uh, salaries will be paid but you will have you'll have then a uh, uh, an emergency loan which has the same uh, interest rate per year yet the fee is larger if you have cash on hand that cash will uh, accrue an interest uh, from the bank, which is the opportunity cost of your money. Okay, and then uh, the workforce, like I said, well, there is a little learning curve here. You People enter as, as rookies, and it takes them 15 days to become fully acquainted with the operation, and they graduate after 15 days to the category of experts. There is no... Uh, uh, linear relation between salaries and expertise or productivity. Uh, here you can set the number of people that you would like. The labor market is deep enough for you to hire as many people as you would like. If you would like to hire people, you just, let's say you wanted to hire five people from the 15 that is shown in this demo screen, screen then you would just uh, type a 20 here, update, and then you would hire in the next simulation round five people. Um, people enter as rookies. While they are rookies, they cannot be fired. Uh, if you want to fire people, you just input here a smaller number, and that smaller number, say 10, you will be firing five people in the next simulation round. Um, you can measure the utilization and workload of these people. And like I said, there might be some fatigue effects if they are overutilized for long periods of time. So that's basically the simulation. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, it's been wonderful to be here with you today. And best of luck running Medica Scientific.